Here's an illustrative case relating to jurisdiction of labor standards claims. Del Monte Land Transport Bus Company v. Armenda On February 12, 2014, the Department of Labor and Employment, through its regional director, issued labor standards compliance certificates to Del Monte Motor Works Inc. or Del Monte Motor Works for having complied with Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012, Other Labor Laws, Rules, and Regulations. For context, Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012, was issued on January 13, 2012 by the Department of Labor and Employment in the exercise of its rulemaking power. The issuance provides for a fixed and performance compensation scheme in the computation of public utility bus drivers and conductors' wages. Its goal was to ensure public road transport safety by improving the working conditions, compensation, and competence of bus drivers and conductors, thereby eliminating their risk-taking behavior. On July 28, 2014, a complaint for money claims was filed against Del Monte Land Transport Bus Company, Inc., or Del Monte Land Transport, by its bus drivers and conductors before the Office of the Labor Arbiter. They averred that since the start of their employment, they have yet to receive certain labor standards benefits and their daily salaries were below prevailing daily minimum wage rates in violation of Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012. Del Monte Land Transport contended that the salaries and benefits of its drivers and conductors were in accordance with law and that its labor standards compliance certificates established compliance with labor standards requirements. Furthermore, it raised the issue of jurisdiction. Specifically, it claimed that the Office of the Labor Arbiter had no jurisdiction to render judgment or award on the money claims since it was the Department of Labor and Employment which had jurisdiction under Article 128 of the Labor Code of the Philippines. In asserting that the Office of the Labor Arbiter had jurisdiction, the drivers and conductors argued, Number 1. Their money claims fell within the cases covered by Article 217 of the Labor Code of the Philippines as it exceeded the aggregate amount of 5,000 pesos. Hence, the authority to hear and decide said cases is vested in the Office of the Labor Arbiter to the exclusion of all other courts or quasi-judicial bodies or tribunals. Number 2. No complaint was filed before the Department of Labor and Employment for the latter to exercise its jurisdiction over their claim. Number 3. Neither was there any inspection conducted at Del Monte Land Transport as the Labor Standards Compliance Certificates in question were issued for the alleged compliance of Del Monte Motor Works, a separate and distinct corporation. Number 4. In issuing the Labor Standards Compliance Certificates, the Department of Labor and Employment exercised its visitorial and compliance powers under Article 128B and not its enforcement and adjudicatory powers under Article 129 of the Labor Code. Did the Office of the Labor Arbiter have jurisdiction over the claims of the drivers and conductors? The Supreme Court ruled in the negative. This was because Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012, clearly conferred jurisdiction with the regional office the claims of the bus drivers and conductors. The court stressed that jurisdiction over the subject matter or authority to try a certain case is conferred by law and not by the whims, consent, and acquiescence of the interested parties, nor by the erroneous belief of the court or tribunal that it exists. It should be exercised precisely by the person in authority or body in whose hands it has been placed by the law. Otherwise, Acts of the court or tribunal shall be void and with no legal consequence. In the present case, the regional director issued several labor standards compliance certificates dated February 12, 2014, certifying Del Monte Land Transport's compliance with the law. Five months after, or on July 28, 2014, the bus drivers and conductors filed a complaint before the Office of the Labor Arbiter for money claims and alleged a violation of the requirements of Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012, in their position paper. According to the court, this fact should have prompted the Office of the Labor Arbiter to refer the case to the Department of Labor and Employment as it was evident that the money claims of the bus drivers and conductors were beyond its jurisdiction. Furthermore, the court noticed the categorical statement of the bus drivers and conductors that they would not have filed the instant case for money claims had there been real compliance of the mandate of Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012. The court stated that such statement only revealed that the claims were the offshoot of the regional officer's issuance of the Certificates of Compliance. For the court, this constituted a challenge by the bus drivers and conductors on the Certificates of Compliance issued by the regional director relative to the labor standards requirements under Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012, which should have been lodged before the Department of Labor and Employment. On the other hand, 
The court did not accept the argument of the bus drivers and conductors that jurisdiction over their claims was vested with the Office of the Labor Arbiter given that the aggregate amount subject of this case exceeded 5,000 pesos. The court stated that Article 128 of the Labor Code of the Philippines speaks of the jurisdiction of the Secretary of Labor and his representatives over labor standards violations based on findings made in the course of visitation and inspection of the business premises of an employer. The court emphasized that the authority under Article 128 may be exercised by the Department of Labor and Employment regardless of the amount of the award claimed for provided there exists an employer-employee relationship. The court noted certain views espousing the proposition that the mode and fora by which the action has been initiated should determine jurisdiction. However, the court clarified that this had been settled in People's Broadcasting Service versus the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment, which summed up the rules governing jurisdiction on labor standards claims as follows. Number one, if the claim involves labor standards benefits mandated by the labor code or other labor legislation, regardless of the amount prayed for, and provided that there is an existing employer-employee relationship, jurisdiction is with the Department of Labor and Employment, regardless of whether the action was brought about by the filing of a complaint or not. And number two, if the claim involves labor standards benefits mandated by the labor code or other labor legislation, regardless of the amount prayed for, and there is no existing employer-employee relationship, or the claim is coupled with a prayer for reinstatement, jurisdiction is with the Office of the Labor Arbiter slash National Labor Relations Commission. For the court, the claims of the bus drivers and conductors were within the purview of the jurisdiction of the Department of Labor and Employment under Article 128 and the provisions of Department Order No. 118, Series of 2012. The court accordingly dismissed the complaint of the bus drivers and conductors for lack of jurisdiction.